G'day folks and welcome back to Beck Basics. So today we're talking about planting out your uh, brassica seedlings, things like uh, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, those sorts of vegetables. But we're doing something a little bit different today. So we're gonna walk you through right through what uh, type of soil you need to do, what you need to do to prepare the soil for your brassicas, right through to how you plant them out, but also something different about um, how we create a little bit of biodiversity, uh, biodiversity in that um, area where you've got your brassicas planted to try and reduce some of the bugs because uh, in the last season we've had really a, an explosion of, of bugs based on uh, the type of weather we've had but also you know the the lack of biodiversity in in gardens uh, can contribute to explosions in particular bug populations as well so we're going to talk about that a little bit as well to try and reduce the amount of bugs you get in and around your brassicas to help you to get a healthier and uh, more successful crop. So let's talk about uh, planting them out. So here we've got our broccoli seedlings, but the first thing we want to do before we uh, even think about planting them out is making sure we've got our soil and our space um, right first. So this is a nice uh, thick, um, well not so much thick, but a nice rich uh, potting mix. It's been augmented with some compost. It's got lots of chick chicken manure in it because one of the things uh, with um, brassicas is that they're actually a leafy green and so they need lots of nitrogen and chicken manure is very high in nitrogen so as you're preparing your soil make sure you've got plenty of um, composted material in there some good quality uh, composted and aged chicken manure just so you get you're really providing that nitrogen for your uh, brassicas so that they can grow really nice and big and strong the most one of the most important things when it comes to reducing bugs and pests in your garden is to make sure that you have strong healthy plants because that's um, really going to help them to be resistant to the bugs so prepare your soil uh, make sure you add plenty of as i said organic matter um, some chicken manure is good uh, and if you're going to be putting chicken manure in it major make sure it's aged and let it sit for a couple of weeks as well just so that uh, it's not too strong and won't burn your roots okay so here we have a couple of our broccoli plants that we've just taken out of the seed tray but you can see they've still got plenty of soil around the bottom i don't want to damage the roots before i actually plant them out so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get a, a bucket with some water in it and just rinse those off rinse the soil off them as you can see as you just swish them around a little bit the soil actually comes off them really, really easily, and then you can very easily separate them so you've got nice two discrete seedlings there. Okay, so now we've got our seedlings separated, we just start to look, think about spacing. So we want them to be about spaced about 40 centimetres apart because they, they will get quite big. So just make sure you've got plenty of space for them. And so then it's just a matter of just getting a, a stick or something, um, poking a nice hole in there, and just gently placing your seedling in there and just covering it around it. Do the same with this one. This isn't the end of the process. So we just put that in there gently. Just pack it down a little bit. Okay. So now that we've got our seedlings planted, I want to start thinking about what I can do to um, avoid getting these uh, attacked by pests. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I net these as, even as soon as they're planted. I want to net them because uh, particularly when while the weather's still warm, uh, the white butterflies and the cabbage moths are still out and they will just attack these and, and eat them overnight. So I'm going to make sure we net them um, before we finish up here today. But we also want to think about companion planting. So the first thing I'm going to do is think about putting some, some onion uh, plants in here as well. Uh, because the onions, the strong smell, can help to uh, deter pests. Be aware too, of course, that onions, they still attract uh, and still can get attacked by things like aphids. Um, so they won't eliminate them completely. And so we need to think about other things as well. Another strong herb that's really good at uh, deterring uh, bugs is dill. So I'm going to plant a little bit of dill in here as well. And then, of course, the perennial marigolds. So marigolds, marigolds aren't a perennial, but I'm just talking about them being one of those things that we talk about uh, all the time. Marigolds are really good at uh, deterring pests as well. So we're going to actually companion plant all of these with our uh, brassica seedlings. Um, now I'm, what I'm gonna do is plant these all together because what I'm really trying to do here is, is to create a little bit of biodiversity. One of the things that we do often in the garden is we plant things in rows and what that does is it's, um, it stops uh, 
that biodiversity, whereas you might have an aphid infestation and you've got this big row of, of um, cucumbers, for example. And so the, the aphids attack the cucumbers and there's nothing really in between to stop them from, from doing that. And they just go from cucumber plant to cucumber plant to cucumber plant thinking, yeehaw, we've got uh, a great feast of, of cucumbers here. Um, but what we want to do is we want to um, include some plants in the, that environment that will also attract some bugs that are going to eat the aphids uh, so that we've got a balance of good bugs and bad bugs. Not that there's really any bad bugs because they all have a function in the environment and in the ecosystem. But we want to have that balance of the various types of bugs so that they all balance each other and you don't get an infestation of one which is what we had last season. So introducing a number of different types of plants can attract different types of bugs, which can be good bugs to um, control some of the ones that are less desirable in the, in the environment. So I'm going to plant these all together in a little clump. Um, it doesn't matter that they're not in rows. You can still have all your vegetables growing, you know, higgledy-piggledy around your garden. They don't have to be in rows. And in some cases, it's actually better to do it like that because you, can, you end up confusing the bad bugs and they don't just go from plant to plant um, because they're de deterred by things like dill, which is quite strong. Um, and so it's, in some ways, it's better to actually plant things randomly rather than in rows. So that's what we're going to do here today. So the first thing I'm going to plant is some marigolds. So I'm going to put them at the back because they're the tallest and I don't want them shading the other plants. So I'll just plant them here at the back. Just a nice hole. Plant them in there nicely, just like any other plant you would normally plant. Nice big root system. So I've done the same thing with these. I've loosened the roots in the, in the water just so they're easier to separate. So just marigolds in there like that at the back. Then we're going to go with a couple of dill plants, a little bit closer to the front, sort of in the middle. Not as tall as the others. Let's plant those in there. Still remembering to keep a little bit of distance away from the brassicas so that they're not being crowded out. So get those in there, like that. And then our onions. Now we're going to do something a little bit different with our onions. Um, so I'll show you that in a second, but uh, as far as how to plant out onions, check out our other video on uh, how to plant out the onions, a little bit different than other seedlings, um, but we're just going to plant some onions in the front here because they're, they're going to be the lowest growing, you just plant them as far apart as the onions will be wide. Plant those in there, cover them up. But we're also going to plant these in the corners because I want to sort of create a, a better barrier with the onions for the brassicas. So in each corner of this pot, I'm also going to plant some onions as well, or at least one onion. Just poke a stick in the corner here, just make a hole, get our onion planted in there like that. And we'll do that in each corner. And the second last thing before we end the process is to just give those a good watering in with some seaweed emulsion um, uh, in some water because that will help to um, reduce the transplant shock. So just give everything a good watering in with seaweed emulsion. That will help them get the best start. Just like that. And then last of all, just cover everything up with nets because while it's still warm, um, you'll still get cabbage moths and white butterflies around that will attack your brassicas. Um, before you know it, they'll be gone because the, the caterpillars can be very devastating and, and uh, very quickly eat your plants. So make sure you net them while it's still warm. Um, those, those pests will uh, go away once it gets really cold. But while it's still warm, make sure you keep the, the nets over. And um, you know, that will give us a, a great environment. And hopefully we'll have a good amount of biodiversity there uh, to, er, to control some of the pests. And we'll have a great uh, brassica crop. Thanks for joining us on Beaks Basics, and we'll see you next time.